In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a YouTube background that looks like this. Um, now, you could also use the same effect to create uh, a wallpaper of some sort or uh, something like that. Um, so to start off, you'll have to download a template that I have uh, created and I'll leave a link uh, to that in the description. So go ahead and open that up. And it should look something like this. And you can go ahead and delete the more boxes layers. The, uh, and you can go ahead and hide the other shape layers. Um, now create a new layer. And go ahead and grab your paint bucket tool and set your foreground color to white. Uh, so just make sure this box is white. And go ahead and paint in your new layer. Uh, now go to Filters, uh, Render, Clouds, Difference Clouds. And make sure um, your detail doesn't really matter, but I put it on 15. And then make sure your X size is uh, all the way up at 16 in your Y size, uh, just pull that slider all the way down to 0.1. Um, and you can check randomize, it doesn't really matter. And then select OK. And then just wait for that to load. And once it's loaded, uh, grab your rotate tool and then click on the layer and go ahead and just rotate that a little. I'm going to rotate it uh, about 31.92 for my ankle. Um, now grab your scale tool and um, the edges right here uh, don't extend all the way down so I'm just going to make my layer, make my, uh, layer a little larger and just drag it until you're satisfied with it. And then you can grab your Remove tool and just move it up a little. And that's about good. Now go to Filters, Distorts, uh, Eye Warp, and this box should open up. And make sure Deform Mode is on Move. And I put, I'm going to put my deform radius at 140 and deform amount at 0.3. And what you want to do is just kind of move. I'm going to move the edges in like so. Pull that down a little. And I'm going to make mine look like that. Uh, you can kind of do whatever you want with this step. I'm just going for kind of a wavy line effect. Um, actually, I don't really like that, so I'm going to play around with that for a while. And you can um, kind of do whatever you want with this. I recommend going with a kind of S shape. And once you're satisfied with what you have, um, go ahead and create another new layer on top of your wave layer and then right click on your wave layer and select alpha 2 selection and go back to your new layer and grab your paintbrush tool and select uh, a fuzzy brush um, and click on your foreground color and I'm going to go with a uh, bright orange um, the HTML notation is EA790A and I'm just going to go ahead and brush in part of my wave. And then uh, choose another color. I'm going to go with a bright blue. And the HTML notation is 00B4FF. And then paint in the rest of your wave. Then I'm going to grab um, a pinkish purple color. Uh, the HTML, no HTML notation is CB78FF, and then I'm going to paint in the 
remaining section. And you can add as many colors as you'd like, and you can add whatever colors you'd like. Um, now you might want to blur this a little more and blend it a little more, so go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to go with a blur radius of 295, uh, but you can kind of adjust that to whatever you'd like. Just because I like to blur the crap out of things. And then set this layer mode onto grain merge. So just click on that drop down menu that says mode and then select grain merge. And then go to select none. Um, and now what you want to do is create another new layer above your color layer. And again, grab your paintbrush tool, but now select your uh, Sparks brush. And this is one of the default brushes, and it looks like that. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, paint a few sparks here and there. And then go to Colors, Desaturate, and then uh, just use Lightness, and then click OK. Now set this layer mode onto Dodge. And then you can lower the opacity a little to about 70. And that just adds some nice spark effects. Um, now go back to your very bottom layer, uh, that just gray background, and create a new layer above that one. And then grab your paintbrush tool again and select a fuzzy brush. And what I'm going to do is just paint a kind of a shadow to my wave below it. Just add a little more to the background. And then set that layer mode on to soft light. And now you're basically done. Um, now if you do want to add some effects to your uh, boxes here, you can, um, well first I'm going to change the color of my box to white. So you can do this just by going to colors, invert, and then go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and then Set your offset X at 0 and your offset Y at 0. Blur radius 10, color black, opacity 80, um, and click OK. And then you can merge your shape layer, merge that down to your drop shadow layer, and then go up to your layers mode, drop down menu, and select overlay. And then that gives you a nice little effect to your boxes. Um, now to make sure that when you actually, if you use this as your YouTube background, you don't want the bottom just to cut off randomly. Uh, so I'd make a new layer above everything, and um, you should use. You can use either black or white or any of the other uh, colors that you can set your YouTube background to, um, and then just either just get your a fuzzy paintbrush and paint that in or grab your gradient tool or your blend tool and then select the gradient FG to transparent and make sure your foreground color is on black or white or any of the other colors you can use for your YouTube background um, but for beginners I recommend just using black or white and then you can just blend that and then just fade out the sides and the bottom of your background just so that it, people with different screen resolutions, it won't look like your background just cuts off. Um, so yeah, that's how you can create a YouTube background that looks like this or that. Uh, oops, did not mean to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to make uh, YouTube, I mean, uh, tutorials a little more frequently now, um, but ideas don't come to me as quickly as they used to. Um, but anyway, if you have some suggestions or requests, send me a message.